Hi, we are now going to learn about electric circuits. We know that everything around us runs on electricity. Whether you take a bulb or a computer or a satellite or a cell phone, everything today works on electricity. But how do these objects actually work? Well, all of them work because they make charges flow around in loops that we call circuit. So charges flow around in circuit loops, electric circuit, that's why we study that. And as these charges flow around in circuit loops, they transfer energy to electrical appliances. Now, how do these charges flow around? Why do they flow around? How do they transfer energy? All these questions have one answer, electric potential. If we understand the idea of electric potential really well, then we'll be able to answer the question of why charges are moving around and how they transfer energy to various objects. What is this idea of electric potential? It's a very simple idea. Every point in the universe has an electrical number. This electrical number we call as its electric potential. This point has a number. That point has a different number. This point has a different number. All around us, every point has a unique number. So this statement, every point has a unique electrical number called its electric potential. This is probably the most important statement in the whole of electricity. Okay, what does this mean? Suppose I have a point A, its number I'm going to say is 11 and we are going to measure it in units of volts. So I'm going to say the electrical number there is 11 volts. So we say the potential, electric potential at A is 11 volts. Okay, so if I pick another point B, its electric potential is minus 8.3 volts. Electric potential can be positive, negative, zero, no problem. Another point C has 23.37 volts. A point D also has 11 volts. Is that okay? Two points can have the same potential, not a problem. But E now has two numbers, two potentials. Is that okay? No. Every point has a unique number. So E cannot have two numbers. So let's get rid of 12. So there's only one number at E. Each point has only one potential. But you can have point F having 11 volts, D also has 11 volts, A also has 11 volts. So multiple points can have the same potential. That is okay. But one point cannot have multiple potentials. So I've given you all these numbers, right? Does this mean forever A must have only 11 volts? Forever B must have only minus 8.3 volts? Not really. If I move some charges around, if I go and switch on or switch off a light, go and switch on the AC, as long as I change things around me, right, electrical changes that I'm inducing by bringing charges, moving things around and so on, what will happen is that these numbers will all change. So if I go and switch on the light, suddenly all these numbers have changed. But notice, again at A there is only one number, at B there is one number, a different number, but now it still has one number. At any given instant, each point has one unique electrical number called its potential. What exactly is electric potential? Let's understand that. Electric potential is what gives potential energy to a charge. Okay. Before we look at that, the symbol that we use for electric potential is VA. Now you know that V stands for volts. So when I say 10 volts, that V there basically stands for volts. But what is the potential at A? I need a symbol for that. We could have used P, but P is used for many different things in physics. So we use V itself. So V with a subscript A means potential at A. Potential at A, V at A is 10 volts. This is also V, that is also V. Don't get confused. Be a bit careful. Similarly, potential at B will be called V with subscript B. Potential at C will be V subscript C and so on. Okay. Now, the potential at A is 10 volts. What does that tell us? Actually, as such, it doesn't tell us anything. But if I go and put a charge Q there, it tells us the potential energy that we will get for the charge. So, potential energy at A, that the charge is sitting at A, how much potential energy does it get? Q times V A. The charge value into the potential at A. Similarly, if the charge was placed at B, 
the potential energy of the charge will be q times vb and so on right so suppose i had a charge of 2 coulombs then the potential energy will be 2 into 10 20 joules so you can see that the potential at a point is telling us the potential energy a charge will have if it was at that point instead of plus 2 coulombs suppose i had minus 3 coulombs then minus 3 into 10 is minus 30 joules so this charge will now have a potential energy of minus 30 joules remember potential is not telling us the energy directly potential into charge q times v is giving us the energy of the charge suppose i had plus 3 coulombs well plus 3 into 10 so plus 30 joules so now suppose this charge moves from a to b how much energy will it have it won't have 30 joules anymore because the potential energy at b is q times vb now the charge is at b so that means 3 times 7 so the energy will be 21 joules now the charge has 21 joules the same charge when it was at a had 30 joules when the charge moves to b it has only 21 joules suppose the charge moves to c it will have how much energy 3 into 2 6 joules so at different locations the charge has different amount of energy how much energy that is decided by the potential at that location so electric potential at a point tells us the energy a charge will have if it is kept at that point earlier i told you that all electrical appliances function on a very simple principle charges move through them and as they move they transfer energy how does that work let us see okay here i have a bulb being driven by a battery this point a is on this side of the bulb that point is on the other side a has a potential of let's say 10 volts c has a potential of 2 volts when the battery sends a charge let's say 3 coulombs to a the potential energy of this charge when it's at a how much is it q times v right so it is going to be 3 into 10 30 joules so this charge has 30 joules when it is at a when this charge goes through the bulb and comes out to c its potential energy becomes 3 times 2 6 joules so from 30 joules the potential energy of the charge has dropped to 6 joules so the charge has lost energy how much 30 minus 6 24 joules what happened to this energy well that is the energy the bulb got and that is why the bulb is glowing right all electrical appliances function on this principle the electric potential energy lost by the charge is the energy gained by the appliance to function right the appliance needs energy to function where is it getting the energy the loss of energy by the charge okay so energy lost by the charge is super important because that is what makes all appliances work okay so the energy lost by the charge what how much did it have in the beginning qva how much does it have at the end qvc qva minus qvc so that is the energy lost by the charge in this case it is 24 joules but qva minus qvc does q change does the charge change no it remains 3 coulombs right so q can be taken out and we can write this as q times va minus vc why is the charge losing energy it is losing energy because the potential is dropping from 10 volts it dropped to 2 volts va minus vc we have a name for this potential drop potential drop is what makes the charge lose energy and if it loses energy is that useful very useful because when the charge loses energy the appliance gets the energy to work Let us now look at this question. 
the potential at A is 7 volts. Potential means electric potential. The potential at A is 7 volts and the potential at B is minus 5 volts. So we know that the potential here is 7 volts and the potential there is minus 5 volts. Potential is not the same as energy. Potential tells us how much energy charge will get when it comes to this point. The second part of the sentence says, when a 4 coulomb charge passes through the bulb from A to B. So let us make the 4 coulomb charge come to A. When it comes to A, how much energy does it have? 4 into 7, Q times V at that location, right? 4 into 7, 28 joules. So the 4 coulomb charge has an energy of 28 joules. And then it's going into the bulb, coming out of the bulb, it comes to B. When it reaches B, how much energy does it have? 4 into minus 5. So that is minus 20 joules. Can energy be negative? No problem. Energy can be negative, energy can be positive. So the charge had energy of 28 joules when it was here. When it reaches B, it has an energy of minus 20 joules. So the energy lost by the charge, QVA minus QVB, it is 28 minus of minus 20. So that is going to give us plus 48 joules. That means the energy lost by the charge is 48 joules. Right? So the charge has lost 48 joules of energy. What happened to this energy? This is the energy that the bulb gains and that's why the bulb radiates out heat as well as light. So how much energy does it supply to the bulb? It supplies 48 joules to the bulb. We saw that potential drop is a very important idea. Potential drop is what makes a charge lose energy. And when a charge loses energy, an appliance gains energy. Right? So we have to understand the idea of potential drop a little more carefully. Let me take two points, A and B, with potentials VA and VB. What is the definition of the potential drop? Well, if you're going from A to B, from A to B, the potential drop is this potential minus that potential. VA minus VB. So that is the potential drop from A to B. We use this symbol VAB to talk about the potential drop from A to B. The first letter is telling you where you are starting. Second letter is telling you where you are ending. So VAB means from A to B and that is VA minus VB. Okay. So if I go this way from A to B, that means I am starting at A, ending at B, VA minus VB. If I now say the potential at A, let us say is 15 volts and at B is 5 volts, we can calculate what is VAB. What is VAB? 15 minus 5, 10 volts. Now the units for VA is in volts, units for B is also, VB is also in volts. So when you take the difference, that also is going to be in volts. So VAB is going to be 10 volts. So we can say this potential drop VAB is 10 volts. Okay. Now if I think about another point C with a potential of minus 2 volts, you know that potential can be negative, it can be positive, right? So this is minus 2 volts and I want to go from A to C. So this will be called VAC because the drop is from A to C. How much will be VAC? Well, it will be VA minus VC. VA is 15. And VC is minus 2. So minus of minus 2. So this is going to be 15 plus 2, 17 volts. So VAC is 17 volts. Okay. Now just like I went from A to B and A to C, I can also go from B to A, right? So if I go from B to A like this, what should I call that? Well, I should call that VBA. Because I'm starting at B and going to A. So what is VBA? Well, it is a potential drop from B to A. And so that must be VB minus VA. Starting point minus the ending point. So VBA is VB minus VA. If I want to calculate that, how much is that? VB is 5 volts minus VA, which is 15 volts. So I'm going to get 5 minus 15 minus 10 volts. So is it okay to have... Potential drops being negative, absolutely yes, not at all a problem. So this is minus 10 volts. Notice something important. VAB is plus 10 volts. VBA is minus 10 volts. They are opposites. VAB is minus of VBA. Okay, this is always true. Does that make sense? 
yeah because you are going to have va minus vb there you are going to have vb minus va so obviously they are opposites of each other so remember this vba is equal to minus vab and you can very easily calculate the potential drop between two points you are starting at one point ending at another point so the potential drop between two points is the initial potential minus the final potential being able to calculate potential drops is a very very important skill you must know really well how to calculate potential drops in different circumstances